Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. At the outset, I would like to thank our organizers, Dr. Rawla, scientific committee chairperson, Dr. Bansu Sabu, for inviting me here and asking me to give this talk. Actually, this is a more over a psychiatric talk, and this is, I think, a little bit overlapping of the talk which the previous speaker has been given. The talk which has been given to me is insulin and distress. Actually, diabetes distress is very common, and actually it is a psychological disorder which has been explained in 1995 by psychiatrists. It is an emotional outburst. When you patient comes to you with diabetes, and when you tell them that you have got a diabetes without any symptoms, if he comes, it has got an emotional outburst. He becomes anxious, and he is always in a denial mode because he always says that yesterday I have eaten something, so I, I have developed this type of sugar levels. And this is a very common thing. And about the insulin, which the topic which has been I am supposed to talk, actually insulin, once you say the insulin has to be taken by type 2 diabetes patient, and almost 20 to 30 percent of the patients after the age of 40 and who are not getting control with drugs, they require insulin. And if you say that you have to take a insulin, either he will change the doctor or he, I, other he will be in a denial mode that uh, he, this sugar which now you are seeing is because of the food which I have consumed yesterday. This is a very common thing. And because as far as possible, we also try to avoid the insulin. And this research which has been shown, the distress is very common in patients. And it is very much more, in incidence is very much high as compared to the patients who are diabetic and on oral medication. So insulin is one of the most important risk factor for the diabetes disease. Problem here, eh? Hello? Diabetes destroys a distinct person and general emotional being. If the distress remains for a long time, patient is likely to go for a de de depression. Diabetes disease is anchored by day-to-day -day experience in living with diabetes because patient knows that he has diabetes and he has to take a lot of medicine, medicines for lifelong. And he is scared that he is not supposed to eat this, he is not supposed to eat that. And that is also the reason why he gets distress. There is a, depression is a generic feeling of the depressed affect. It is not linked to a specific condition or experience. Most of the studies measure both depression and uh, distress. Common for these measures to be correlated, it is almost 10 to 30 percent. If we compare depression and dis, uh, distress, as already I have said, if the distress remains for a long term, the patient is likely to. There are four group of individuals. There is high levels of depression, high levels of diabetes, distress, negative emotional affects, which is a fine one. High levels of distress and symptomatology, which, which in some of the patients you can get in both the things. The elevated rates of depression we see in diabetes may in fact represent persistent negative emotional impact of diabetes that it is resulting in a generalized negative effect. The patient always feels and he is always have a negative state of mind that I have got a diabetes, I cannot do this, I cannot do like this, I cannot eat, I cannot eat sweets, all these things and he is already under burden that how he is going to live with the diabetes for a lifelong, and how he is going to take insulin or tablets, because it is a burden not only emotionally, but it is a uh, financial burden as well on the patient's life. And because of this thinking, the patients are likely to go for a depression. So depression and distress, distress is, uh, we see in almost 30 percent. Patient is depressed as well as depressed, it is in 5 to 50. 50 to 70 percent, we see. In, uh, anything. Even if the patient knows that diabetes, he accepts it very well that I do have diabetes but there is a lot of treatment which is options are available and I can be alright with this and I can live like a normal life. Then there is a uh, few patients who go for depression, almost 5 to 10 percent of the patients. What are the problem areas in diabetes? That is the pet. There is a, this, there is a scale which is a 20 atom scale which this scale mainly comprises of the how the patient is living with the diabetes. Whether he is happy with the treatment, whether he is happy with the doctor who is treating him, whether he has got uh, different concerns about the food, and all these scales are uh, represented from not a problem to a serious problem. There is a 20-point scale program where patient has got, if you have to ask the questionnaire, you have to give a questionnaire to that particular patient, and whether you have to ask whether he is happy with the treatment, whether he is happy with the surroundings, you know, all these things, and accordingly, the, uh, these uh, marks are given, up and up from 0 to 100. 
स्कोर्स मोर देन हंड्रेड एंड अबव आर कंसिडर्ड एज सिग्निफिकेंट डायबिटीज डिस्ट्रेस पेड हिल्स ओनली टोटल ओवरऑल डायबिटीज डिस्ट्रेस स्कोर नो सब स्केल आर अवेलेबल फॉर दिस पेड इज यूजली यूज वाइडली एंड इज अवेलेबल इन मल्टीपल लैंग्वेजेस so what is the content of the spell this sorry this is a very faint slide but what this slide represent this slide represented the what are the reactions of the patient for his treatment what are his was his anxiety level how, whether he is happy with the treatment whether he is happy with the surroundings which is they are supporting him whether he is happy with the insulin what he is taking what is the mode of uh, 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 whether uh, he is happy with the tablets and all these scales if you from uh, not a problem to the serious problem there are this is almost a five scale so if the patient scale is more than 40 he is likely to have more diabetes distress so now the most important thing as already i have said is insulin and diabetes once you utter the word insulin you have to take to the patient as already i have said patient they are likely to go for anxiety this anxiety level becomes increase and he always think that insulin is such a drug once you start the insulin he has to take it for a life long and because he has he is thinking on that lines he becomes more and more anxious and he becomes emotionally disturbed disturbed and he is always in a denial mode so for adults with type 2 diabetes insulin is is typically recommended when patients are not getting control with oral anti diabetic drug and about 22% of adults with type 2 diabetes over the age of 40 are prescribed insulin type 2 diabetes patients upon hold negative attitudes about the insulin therapy because as already said the insulin causes so many things patient there is some myth that patient insulin may cause blindness once you start the insulin you have to take it for life long and he see the burden of the insulin cost of the insulin and accord because of that he becomes more and more anxious type 2 diabetes are upon hold negative attitudes about the insulin therapy and reluctant most of the patients are reluctant to begin the insulin in our day to day practice negative attitudes and concerns about the potential harms of from insulin therapy including previous beliefs in myth that insulin causes complications like blindness it is a myth particularly common among ethnic minority and those with lower socio economic status once prescribed adherence to insulin therapy also appears to be lower than for oral medications among adults uh, with type 2 diabetes better understanding the distressing aspect of managing diabetes among those treated with insulin may improve the refinement of tailored interventions for the diabetes distress and self management insulin and diabetes the quantitative research has suggested that already i tell that type 2 diabetes treated patient with insulin therapy reports significantly more diabetic distress than the patients who are, who are on oral anti diabetic drug there is a large population us based survey where adults with type 2 diabetes patient treated with insulin at higher rates of major depression than adults with type 2 diabetes patient not prescribed with the insulin that means those patients who are on oral anti diabetic drug delhanty and kalis found that increased diabetes distress in adults with insulin treated type 2 diabetes was primarily explained by increased illness severity as well as patient always think that once you are starting with insulin he feels that the, his diabetes is very much high and it is uncontrolled and he is likely to get for complications of diabetes and it is a burden of the insulin for uh, for a treatment as well there is one more study empirical study of adults with type 2 diabetes patients their higher levels of diabetes emotional burden and regimen related distress was observed in insulin treated patients than the patients who are treated orally independent of complications and other comorbidities insulin treatment was associated with higher levels of diabetes distress among patients with low level of social support insulin treated adults with type 2 diabetes may lesser increase of risk of diabetes distress partly through increased diabetes disease burden and possibly due to the increased burden of self management the association of diabetes related emotional distress and diabetes treatment in primary care patients with type 2 diabetes this was a study of 115 uh, primary care patients with type 2 diabetes completed problem areas in diabetes that is paid scale and other question paid score were significantly higher among insulin treated compared with the oral treated or diet treated patients here you can see up to 25% of the patient with who are insulin treated has got a paid values more insulin treated patients reported significantly higher distress than oral uh, or diet treated patient distress in insulin treated adults was linked to the diabetes illness and treatment burden and greater concern about glycemic control study to examine moderating role of social support social support is very important in patients who are taking uh, uh, insulin the adults with type 2 diabetes patients uh, type 2 diabetes number of patients were 119 completed validated major to diabetes distress and social support the greater greater support satisfaction was significantly associated with lower distress if there is a social support is good the distress levels are less 
The post ad hoc probing revealed a consistent pattern. Insulin was significantly associated with more diabetes instead at low levels of support, but was not at a high level of support. This is a diabetes, this is from the patient's perspective. The six focus groups were conducted with 32 adults with type 2 diabetes. Insulin treated participation described more distress in certain key areas. Distress is specific to insulin injections. Patient is worried about the injections. Then distress related to the number of medications they are taking. Oral medications plus injections, it becomes a number of medications becomes high and cost of the uh, treatment also goes high. Insulin treated participants are more often described emotional distress as having a negative influence on their diabetes management. Diabetes distress from the patient perspective, insulin treated more often described diabetes as having a casual influence on emotional distress and depression. More often reported distress specific to the challenge of regulating glycemic control as compared to those on oral medication. Participants on insulin are more likely to describe distress related to functional limitation and pain and discomfort related to the neuropathy. Insulin treated participants were also more likely to verbalize problems with medical appointments. Specifically, they have got a long wait times. Implications of prescribing insulin, understanding diabetes distress related to insulin treatment and uh, could have implications for the assessment and treatment of for those with type 2 diabetes who are prescribed insulin. Interventions that incorporate attention to diabetes distress with support for insulin treatment have shown a promise and decreasing distress compared to the uh, uh, those patients who don't have support and educational intervention that included support for intensive insulin therapy with attention to diabetes distress and improving self management strategies was effective at improving glycemic control. So what is the development of uh, treatment plan for this is there that context that individuals used to describe their distress may also help providers to identify and develop treatment plans for these type of uh, patients. Non-insulin treated uh, participants were more likely than insulin treated participants to reduce the burden of living with other comorbid conditions. And insulin treated participants were more likely to endorse diabetes related physical burden. So intervention targeting this the individuals not treated with insulin may have been more likely to reduce other medical problems because diabetes related physical burdens may uh, be less silent. Increased diabetes specific illness burden and diabetes specific distress among insulin treated individuals suggest the potential value for intervention in diabetes distress among insulin treated patients. So what are the recommendations on insulin distress? Insulin distress is a part of uh, and contributes to the diabetic distress brought about mainly because of misconceptions about insulin therapy and a lack of accurate information on insulin. Insulin initiation is pursued as the end of the road. So patient always feel that once insulin started there is nothing beyond that and often leads to distress which can cause acute or chronic. Physicians need to apply the biophysical model for health rather than a purely glucocentric approach in these type of patients. And physicians need to initiate sequential counseling and use these to understand analogies to help patients with diabetes to overcome insulin distress. This is a listen approach is very important in these type of patients. Listen is uh, L-I-S-T-E-N. Use simple, uh, easy to weigh, use basal insulin accompanied by adequate insulin education can in improve adherence to the insulin therapy and increase patient's acceptance. Is the patient's concern that is L. Information equipoise is very important. Share sources of support. E for therapeutic patient education, that is a teamwork, is empathetic understanding and expression, and N is for neutral, non-judgmental communication. A thorough biomedical and psychological evaluation should precede and accompany discussion regarding insulin in type 2 diabetic patients. Diabetes care providers must be aware of insulin distress, its etiology, clinical features, and management and potential biomedical and psychological factors which may limit insulin acceptance adherence must be explored and addressed properly. The need for insulin and urgency of insulin friction should be balanced with the severity of the insulin distress. In persons with life-threatening, organ-threatening or limb-threatening illness for which insulin therapy is needed, insulin distress mitigation strategies should be implied. In persons with low or significant insulin distress, insulin therapy should be initiated as per clinical conditions and coping skills should be strengthened in parallel. In persons with significant insulin distress and no immediate threat to health, insulin distress should be addressed prior to starting insulin in all these patients. Addressing of insulin distress may take one or more clinical interventions. In conclusion, distress is a major hurdle in the treatment of diabetes alertus. In treating insulin distress strategies beyond diabetes, education should be aimed at multiple components of the behavioral change should be implemented through simple measures of motivation. Positive behavioral changes improve treatment, compliance, and adherence to the insulin therapy. 
identifying the patients who might need insulin and walking them through various phases of initiation, titration and intensification may help to achieve the optimal glycemic target. Thank you. Thank you very much.